Hello everyone! In this video, I will be presenting the paper Making It Work, Makerspaces, Maker Community, and School Partnership. I will start with the project introduction, followed by a short description of the Maker Movement. I will then delve into the present study before discussing the results and future works for this project. My name is Linus, and I'm a PhD candidate in the School of Design at Swinburne University. Ravi, our Design Technical Officer at our Proto Lab, and Kristen, another PhD candidate at the School of Engineering, also took part in this research. In this project, we focus on the Makerspace facility. Makerspaces come in a range of sizes and forms. They are called by many names and host a range of equipment, from traditional woodworking tools to digital fabrication machinery and even biology kits. With such a wide variety, it is unsurprising to find each makerspace with their own unique set of making equipment. What unites them is, as Doherty, the founder of the maker movement, once said, they are publicly accessible places to design and create. It is these two actions, to design and to create, that gives it the name makerspace. While makerspaces first emerged from within the community, civic spaces like libraries are also providing makerspaces so that locals can gather to design, make, and connect with other like-minded makers. Makerspaces also facilitate informal and peer-to-peer -peer learning and are unsurprisingly emerging rapidly in many universities. Finally, another key component of the maker movement is the sharing of their making passion. Regularly, makers organize maker fairs such as this one in 2017 at Swinburne University. Such fairs gather makers from all parts of the city to showcase their passion projects and inspire each other with new ways of designing and creating. With this maker community in mind, our research seeks to discover what are the benefits and challenges of partnerships between makerspaces, high schools, and tech schools. Originally, we focused on how high schools can help strengthen the maker community. In our process, we realized the need to also include tech schools in the conversation. Reintroduced in the last five years, there are 10 tech schools in Victoria, each using leading-edge technology to provide learning programs to their local secondary school students and to connect schools with the local industry. We conducted six interviews with makers from the community and made sure we had an even split of participants from volunteer-run makerspaces and commercial makerspaces. We then interviewed six representatives from schools and again made the conscious effort to recruit from tech schools, independent high schools, and public high schools. We used the school as community hub's development framework to narrow our questions down to focus on the needs of the makers. Specifically, we asked about the needs for their equipment, space, and expertise. What we found are as follows. Regarding equipment, makerspaces are self-sufficient, as they hack their equipment and adapt it to serve their needs. Generally, High schools have technology that cater to classrooms, such as multiple sets of electronic circuitry for a large group of students. On the other hand, tech schools have more advanced equipment, which makers generally cannot afford. Regarding space, makers need permanent spaces so that they can store their ongoing projects for long periods of time. They also prioritize access to space more than the space itself. That is because makers work on their projects during their free time, which can be sporadic. Unfortunately, both high schools and tech schools have restricted time access, mostly due to the lack of staffing to keep the space open. Regarding expertise, makerspaces attract people with different skill sets into their space and do not need additional expertise. Interestingly, high schools need skilled people to operate and maintain their equipment, whereas tech schools need people experienced with making to fulfill the potential of the equipment. In our paper, we also compiled the needs and offerings of these three stakeholders, which reveal potential partnerships they can create with each other. For example, high schools can loan learning kits to community makerspaces so that makers can run workshops with large number of participants. Another example is tech schools can allow makers to use their advanced technologies when specific projects cannot be completed with makerspace machines. In return, makers can provide your expertise and an authentic learning scenario to high school programs. Tech schools can also partner with makers to provide high schools with the much needed expertise. While these are some of the potential benefits makerspaces and schools can gain from each other, there are three challenges to consider prior to engagement. 
Firstly, makers do not know what the schools have. This reduces the likelihood of makers approaching schools. Secondly, as makers are not always available due to their sporadic schedule, they are more likely to commit to short-term or one-off projects instead of semester-long projects. Finally, makers are not volunteer teachers. While they may be willing to help on small tasks, they need to be compensated for their time. High schools are aware of this problem too, and tech schools also don't have the resources to take on projects outside their job scope. While this may appear as a significant obstacle, the three stakeholders were willing to consider other forms of reimbursement. So far, we only reported on the needs of the maker community. From our interviews, we also saw other themes that reflected the school as community hub development framework, such as discussions on vision, safety and access, and operational funding models. A next step would be to report on these themes. Secondly, we only focus on the community, high school, and tech school maker spaces. Collecting data from the other stakeholders in the maker ecosystem, such as universities, libraries, and the Department of Education and Training, can identify more partnership opportunities that can further strengthen the maker community. Finally, a greater clarity on the different types of maker spaces can help stakeholders recognize the advantages of their local maker spaces, which may help initiate partnership conversations between the different parties. Lastly, to make it work between makerspaces, high schools and tech schools, we propose leveraging tech schools as the mediator between community makerspaces and high schools, because tech schools serve to connect schools with industry and have the right facilities to do so. Thank you for listening and any feedback to further our research is greatly appreciated.